Continuing on to episode 4, a group of bandits has captured three girls who work at Mitsugoshi. The bandits claim that Mitsugoshi is making too much money. Just from one shipment they carried, it could reach up to a hundred million zenny. The bandit leader hopes that Mitsugoshi won't be able to move forward anymore. One of the girls wonders who their boss is. The bandit is delighted to inform them that their boss is Garter. Mitsugoshi has angered the one who controls business in Midgard. The girls find it hard to believe. After all, Garter is known as a respected figure, the leader of the Trade Federation. He's also a religious and generous person who often donates to the Holy Church. It's hard to believe that he would use bandits to destroy someone else's business. The bandits just laugh, saying that no matter how good someone appears, they must have another side. Just like Garter, who uses bandits like them to easily become powerful. Instantly, the three girls react with disdain, expressing their boredom with such stories. Behind the bandits, another group of girls has appeared. They are members of the Shadow Garden led by Alpha. It turns out that the three girls who were captured earlier are also members of the Shadow Garden. As the bandits said, everyone has another side. The bandits seem to panic upon seeing a group of women dressed in black. They now realize they are facing the Shadow Garden and that marks the end of their fate. The next day, Sid, Jaga, and Hyoro are hanging out. Jaga and Yoro are proudly showing off their new outfits from Kamkad and Itsugoshi, which they just purchased. They are confident that many women will be drawn to them because of these outfits. From the design, Sid suspects that Ida is the creator. After Gamma, Beta, and Epsilon do the same thing, it appears that they are indulging themselves too much. Suddenly, the writing on Yoro's clothing starts peeling off as if it's just a sticker. Yet, that writing is what made it seem like an original item. When Hyoro removes all the writing, a clothing store logo from their previous visit is revealed. Jaga's outfit has the same issue. It's no wonder they got them at a cheap price, their clothes are not authentic. Upon closer inspection, the genuine outfits have more detailed writing. Suddenly, Sid remembers that all of his clothing was provided by Alpha and the others. In fact, all they wear is like replicas from his previous world. Initially, Sid thought it was just a cultural trend in the capital. It seems like Alpha and the others have expanded their business at will. Using Sid's knowledge from his previous world, Sid isn't surprised that they have made many enemies among the merchants whose profits were taken. Nevertheless, Sid already has plans to improve the situation. On that evening, Sid donned different attire from his shadow look and even wore a party mask. From this moment onward, he referred to himself as a super elite agent. He even changed his tone and speaking style. With this appearance, he then entered the carriage to meet Yukai. Initially, Yukai called him by the name Shadow. However, starting now, he wished to be addressed as John Smith. John's reason for teaming up with Yukai was that he would also benefit from it. Yukai then informed him that the Trade Federation had held a gathering led by Garter the previous day. They discussed plans to strengthen their siege against Mitsugoshi. Nonetheless, Yukai stated that their overall plan remained unchanged. When Mitsugoshi and the Trade Federation battled it out, John and Yukai would seize everything. Yukai also warned that there was a dangerous figure behind the Trade Federation. Positioned above Garter, he was a swordmaster from the underworld who had become the ruler Kenki Geten. He was a dangerous man who would stop at nothing to achieve his goals. It seemed that Yukai held a personal grudge against him. Before John got off the carriage, he vowed to destroy everything and rebuild it. The following day, the Trade Federation launched a massive autumn discount. Jaga and Hyoro invited Sid to go shopping as well. It wasn't just the traders from the Trade Federation, the entire market was offering substantial discounts. Due to this, Sid thought that Alpha and the others were going overboard. They disregarded the local residents and only focused on the stores they managed themselves. Instead of making substantial profits, they were causing the existing market stores to resent them. If they garnered more animosity from their competitors, Mitsugoshi's future would look bleak. However, Sid once again stated that he would destroy everything and rebuild it. When the Trade Federation demolished Mitsugoshi, Sid would dismantle the Trade Federation. Then, he would obtain all the remaining profits and establish a new federation in the market. If he appointed Alpha and the others as the leaders of this federation, Mitsugoshi would be reborn under a different name. While Sid was shopping with Jaga and Yoro, he noticed something odd about the money he was using. He felt like it wasn't the same as before. As it turned out, it was the newly circulated currency from the Trade Federation. Today's big discount was also a way to introduce this new currency. The money they used to use was from Mitsugoshi Bank. Sid had no idea that Alpha and the others had expanded their influence to the banking sector. 
This reminded Sid of the time when he was a child and had given Alpha some information about the banking system. By the way, he had only shared a bit of information from a TV program on MHK. Sid stopped explaining because he was starting to forget the content of the show. However, Alpha and the others used the teachings from MHK to start their own banking system and even created their own currency. Even their competitors ended up doing something similar. It was at that moment that Sid realized something that could benefit him. Mitsugoshi's money was printed in full color and had a watermark. Meanwhile, the Trade Federation's money had messy printing and a simple design. In his old world, Sid had once played a prank by photocopying money, but he got scolded for it. However, the Sid of today was a super elite agent. He could make his childhood dream come true. Sid immediately ran off with Jaga's money. In the evening, John once again came to the carriage to meet Yukai. He wanted to discuss paper money. A piece of paper was considered by the people as a bank loan, but in reality, it was just a receipt for the gold deposited in the bank. For example, someone deposited 10,000 zenny. Then, they were given a paper receipt as proof of the deposit, which they could use for shopping. John then showed two different currencies for Mitsugoshi and the Trade Federation. Upon comparison, Mitsugoshi's money had a watermark. The Trade Federation's money also had issues with design, printing, and cutting. With all these factors, the Trade Federation's money would be easy to counterfeit. John then suggested making counterfeit money. However, Yukai was a bit skeptical because the Trade Federation's paper money was only in circulation in the capital for now. Even if they made counterfeit money, it would be immediately detected and stopped. John was a bit surprised by this. Suddenly, he approached Yukai with a serious expression. John asked if Yukai truly thought that way. In reality, John was genuinely asking, but Yukai saw it as a test. Yukai then reconsidered. If they flooded the market with counterfeit money quickly, it would undoubtedly be discovered. The news would spread to the people, making them doubt whether the money in their wallets was counterfeit. This would lead to a loss of credibility for paper money. The people would rush to exchange their money for gold and push the banks. John was increasingly surprised by Yukine's response. He asked again if Yukine truly thought that way. Feeling intimidated, Yukine fought it over deeply. She finally became 100% certain of John's plan even though John hadn't planned to go that far. After that, John turned back into Sid and was eating at a Raymond shop. It seemed that Delta noticed his presence and asked for a meal too. After the meal, Sid had to carry Delta, who clung to him too tightly. He asked why Delta was in the capital. She mentioned that she was hunting a thief on Alpha's orders. Delta was also insistent on taking Sid along on the hunt. However, Sid was sure that Alpha had made a promise to meet with Delta, and indeed, Delta had forgotten about her meeting with Alpha. Nevertheless, she still wanted to go hunting with Sid. Meanwhile, Garter was seen reporting to Geten. Once again, the Trade Federation's agents had been defeated by Mitsugoshi. If they still couldn't succeed, Geten ordered them to mobilize the Yatsuba members. Then, the next day in the underground waterway, Delta was tearing apart the Trade Federation's agents. Sid, or Shadow, was with her, but he was only searching for treasure because Delta had taken all the action. It seemed that the leader of the group was one of the Yatsuba members. He was a half-beast named Zebra. He claimed to be Delta's older brother. Zebra informed them that Delta's real name was Sarah. Delta admitted that Zebra had the same scent as their father. The last time Zebra heard about Sarah, she was being hunted by their father due to being possessed by a demon. Despite hearing the whole story, Delta remained indifferent and killed him. She said she didn't need a weak older brother. Besides, their father was the chief of the tribe and had many concubines. He had over 1,000 children, so it didn't matter if one weak person was killed. Garger then reported to Geten that Zebra had been killed. One of their underground hideouts had been attacked, and that's where they found Zebra's body. Garter was worried that if things continued this way, it would affect the number of people working beneath them. They had already used a lot of assets for building the bank and bribing parliament members to get their paper money into circulation. Garter suggested retreating and reorganizing the plan. However, Getten reminded Garter that he had achieved his current position thanks to him. So Garter just needed to follow Getten's and the other's orders. Furthermore, in reality, Zebra was the weakest member of Yatsuba. Zebra then ordered the mobilization of three other Yatsuba members. At that moment, it was revealed that Getten seemed to have a connection with the church. 